Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. On today's program, we're going to be talking about how one of the first governors in recent history grew up here. Uh, I'm talking about Tennessee Governor Bill Lee and how he signed a bill cracking down on rioters. We're also going to be discussing the left's response to said bill and why this is so vital and other states must follow suit quickly. We're also going to be talking uh, and discussing the new virtual classrooms most schools are engaging in. Shocking examples of blatant indoctrination, all stories from this week, and how to protect our kids from it. All of this and more on today's show. Charles Faddis, who is a former CIA operations officer with over 30 years experience, recently said this in an article, and he's he's totally right. He's right. Much of the mass media, which is ideologically aligned with the writers and anarchists. Let me say that again. Mass media, those who are in control of mass media are aligned ideologically with the rioters, with the anarchists. But the mass media, they they continue to refer to the mobs as protesters and describe scenes of radical mass violence and destruction as peaceful protests. This is not an oversight. This is not a case of a difference of uh, interpretation. This is a deliberate effort to prevent the American people from understanding what is happening. This is an intentional tactic designed to keep the population as a whole quiet, compliant, defenseless. Until when? Until it's too late. We are not experiencing a wave of social unrest generated by injustice and the abuse of police authority. We are watching an insurrection in progress. One which uses incidences of police use uh, of force as pretext, but which has in its goal the destruction of the existing social, economic, and political order in the United States. Don't take my word for it. Listen to them. They are telling you with their own mouths, what they want. And that's the, abol- that's the abolition of the United States as we know it. Hi everyone, as many of you know, my name is Lilith Sinclair. I'm an Afro-Indigenous non-binary local organizer here in Portland, organizing for the abolition of not just the militarized police state, but also the United States as we know. Let me tell you something that you already know. You already know that peaceful protesters don't burn down businesses and state buildings for that matter. They don't throw bricks and bottles at police officers. Peaceful protesters don't, they don't loot. They don't kill. And they don't set up so-called autonomous zones inside the borders of a sovereign nation. Can't we at least find some common ground in saying that those actions are wrong. If we cannot, as an American people, find common ground there, then, then, then we're never gonna be able to move forward. Can't we unite as a nation against lawlessness if we really want a nation of laws, a nation of peace, a nation of justice? I, you know, I don't, wanna be a, I don't wanna be pessimistic here, but I don't, I don't feel like we can, I, mean, I hope we can. But as of right now, we cannot, because the truth is that they don't want justice. They don't want peace. They don't want, I'll tell you what they want. They want to do away with the established order. They want to do away with the nation of laws because they have to destroy the old system if they want to set up a new system and you don't want their new system. Don't believe me? I want to show you a bill that passed in Tennessee last week. If we really want a nation of laws, a nation of justice and peace, then we should all be able to agree that this fair and reasonable bill is what we need. Joining me now on the program uh, is co-host 
Andrew Bellers to discuss more of this. Before I get started on this, because we're going to talk about this bill, um, let's just run. A, we put together a B-roll of some of the the peaceful protests that have been happening in Tennessee. Um, let's go ahead and run that now as I start to read this article. Uh, so the article is Tennessee Governor Signs Bill Cracking Down on Certain Protests. Uh, it says that he signed a bill that imposes harsher penalties for protesters who break certain laws during demonstrations. That's important. He's, this is not a law against protesters. You're seeing right now um, a courthouse being burned. You're going to see a statue being pulled down. These are the kinds of unlawful acts that are happening during these protests. And obviously, Tennessee's not alone in this. Uh, this is happening all over the nation. But this is for this is for rule breakers. This is for lawless people. Um, it says Lee and other Tennessee Republicans have defended the bill, pointing to the fires that you're seeing uh, that were set inside and outside the courthouse in May. He said, I think what we see was a courthouse on fire and businesses being broken into and vehicles being damaged. We saw lawlessness that needs to be addressed immediately. Mm -hmm. The very beginning of this bill states that this is not a bill against peaceful protesters. It says Tennesseans have the right to engage in peaceful assembly and protests. And many peaceful protests and demonstrations have occurred across Tennessee in recent weeks, including on and around government property. But some protests on and around government property, including the state capitol grounds, have resulted in vandalism and defacement of property, overnight camping on public property in violation of state law, and other risks to public safety. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. not, and we're, we're going to get to how, how the media has been oh, yeah, portraying the are, this. The liberals are freaking out over this bill. But this is not a bill against peaceful protests. No, it's not. And so, and, and, you know, I just want to stop and I want to just, I just want to applaud uh, Governor Bill Lee of Tennessee for having common sense yeah for creating a bill that will make it that is attempting to make it harder to let's say burn down their courthouse yeah that that's common sense yet the liberal media is freaking out over this bill and I'm gonna and we're gonna show it to you but just I just want to condense this bill so this bill uh, is um, it's SB, and what are the numbers? It, it was passed last Thursday. Yep, it's SB 8005. So it was passed last Thursday, and and and, and, and a little bit kind of in a, a subliminal, not subliminal, but um, hush way, because they didn't want to have everybody freaking out over this bill, which that is what they're doing. The entire bill can be summed up into these four different things. These four different things. Tennessee's bill, SB 8005, passed last Thursday. Mandatory 45-day day hold in jail for aggravated rioting. Let's, let, that's great. Yeah. We can agree on that. Increases fines against protesters who assault somebody. Yes, common sense, absolutely. Forces rioters to pay restitution. What do you think about that one? Totally, hey, totally hey, legitimate. People have been wanting restitution lately. <laughs> hey, now, oh, now, now yeah. finally, you know, <laughs> if you make a mess, you got to clean it up with your own money. Yeah. Makes attacks on first responders a class C felony. It's a good bill. It's a good bill. It is. But the chaos has ensued following and let me tell you right now that if this was written, let's say, in 2007, before Barack Obama, nobody would have thought a thing of it. I'm being serious. Let me just, let me just stop really quickly. If in 2007, if, if Tennessee created a bill and it was signed into law in Tennessee, and the law said anybody who is rioting in an aggravated manner, which is rioting, gets a 45 hold in jail, nobody would have thought a thing of that. No matter what political party, no matter what race, everybody like, yeah, that makes sense. Increased fines for protesters who assault somebody. Increased, increased fines, sure, I'm okay with that. That's common sense. 
forces riders to pay restitution, okay, makes attacks on first responders a Class C felony. I think most people, just back in, let's say, 2007, would have been totally okay with that. Nobody would have thought a thing of it. I'm being serious. Obama left a legacy. His legacy is a weaker and more divided America. Barack Obama, he, he rekindled a racial divide that had been steadily disappearing in American society uh, in fostering group identity politics for political advantage. The Obama administration only divided the American people. And I think most people know that. You know, I, I live in, in, in a city that, you know, I don't know the exact demographic, but it's pretty, pretty split. Mm-hmm between black and white. And growing up, I never thought of any like racial issues or I never felt any racial tensions here in Decatur, Illinois, growing up through the 90s and the early 2000s. It's because of Obama, who was a trained Marxist. It wasn't by chance. It, this is, and, and listen, I'm telling you right now, you need to wake up. Obama was a trained Marxist, like all of them. And I don't care if I sound like a record on repeat. Hmm. People need to wake up. They need to grow a pair and start proclaiming to those around them what's really happening. So I, I am just reminded of this story of Benjamin Franklin after the 100-day convention to write the Constitution, he walked out of the what's known today as Independence Hall, and Mrs. Powell came up to him and said, well, what's it going to be, Ben? Or what's it going to be, doctor? A monarch or a republic? And he looked at her and he said, what? He said, a republic, madam, if you can keep it. If you can keep it. Yeah. Meaning the republic can be lost. And the how, does, how can it be lost? It's whenever conservatives give up. Those who want to... Conservatives of what? Tell me what a conservative is. Well, well, we're trying to conserve essentially what the founders established. Thank you. And when conservatives wave the, wave the white flag of surrender, or they're waving the white flag of surrender unintentionally because they're not saying anything, and they're not teaching their kids and grandkids how to conserve, mm -hmm. we're going to lose it. Yeah. You see, every generation in America has to patch, pass the baton, pass the torch of what it means to be an American. This is the greatest country on the earth. But the moment people get into the voting booths and they start voting for what benefits does the government give me, they start voting for what they want in that sense, rather than what's, what's the best for the greater good, we've lost it. We have lost it. Listen, and then common sense. This bill is totally common sense. Yeah. But yet we have people like, look, look, look how it's being painted. Here's an article right here. This is how it's being painted by the liberal left. Controversial Tennessee anti-processor law is another brick in the wall dividing Americans from their constitutional rights. Tennessee Governor Bill Lee signed SB 8005, a bill that imposes a series of criminal penalties and mandatory minimal, minimum sentences on those engaged in certain demonstration and protest activity. You're right, like burning buildings down. Hmm. Under the law, Tennessee protesters face felony conviction and harsher penalties, including loss of the right to vote for engaging in certain protest activity. Listen to this. This is Kristen Clark, president and executive director of the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law. She said this, the racial motivation underlining this law is undeniable. Oh my god! Mandatory 45 hold in, day hold in jail for aggravating Aggravated rioting, yeah. she's saying, is the racial motivation underlining this law is undeniable. That's insane. This is a direct response here. I'm, qu I'm quoting her. This is a direct response to the Black Lives Matter movement. You're 100% right it is. This is not a direct response to black lives at all. Not in the least. But you're right. It is a result to the Black Lives Matter movement because it has nothing to do with the benefit of black lives it has to do with the benefit of the Marxist agenda. So you're right, it does. 
Tennessee is trying to slow it down mm -hmm. to criminalize. I'm going to continue quoting her to criminalize protest activity and disenfranchise voters on top of its uh, on top of it defies principles that lie at the heart of our democracy. This is an abuse of state power intended to silence voices of dissent from the streets to the ballot boxes. That's insane. Talk about listen, it. I mean, listen to her language there. She said to criminalize protest activity. While most of the things that, that are actually changed in this bill, they're just upping um, the, the repercussions of already considered criminal activity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not saying that, that we're introducing uh, a new law, a new criminal activity. Anyway, here's, an, here's another article from Time Magazine. Uh, new Tennessee law severely sharpens punishment for some protesters, potentially endangering their voter rights. I'm going to show you how misleading this is. This, this is, is time. This people is, read time, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, some people read time, yeah. This is, I mean, this is fake news. This is, when people say fake news, this is what they're talking about. Tell us why it's fake news. I will. So uh, a new Tennessee law signed by the governor this week makes it a felony for protesters to camp out overnight on state property. That much is true. And then it says, if convicted, they could lose their voting rights. Well, yes, if you get a felony and you're in prison, then you do temporarily lose your voting rights. So that's, I'm going to stop you right there. So people are mad about that. Yes. People are mad because they're saying that people that are camping, camping, you got to read in the bill what it means to camp. Yes. Okay. That camping can result in a class what felony? Uh, it, it just says a felony, but I think it's a class E felony. Okay. So why is that a lie? Why is that fake news? Well, <laughs> if you can answer it, I can. Do you want me to answer it? Go, go ahead. I can tell you right now. First off, the people that are camping, according in the bill, nobody gets punished. Nobody gets uh, sent to jail, even for overnight, without a warning. Listen, what you're doing is you're camping on state property. You cannot do that. Please leave. And if they return within 12 hours, now it's going to go down. But you got to understand, in the bill, it talks about how campers will be forced to pay restitution for any damages they cause. So are these traditional campers going down to the creek, taking the camper down with the kids, burning, burning some weenies, making some s'mores, <laughs> and we'll, we'll shoot. I'm now a class, I'm an old felon. <laughs> no. And, and someone like that, why would they ever be... Uh, why would they ever say to a, a camper like that, just so you know, you're gonna have to pay for all the property damage that incurs while you're on the property. These aren't campers, people. Yeah. But time, according to Times News, because they're, they're, they're wordsmiths. Yeah, and this is where it gets really misleading with time. So they said if convicted, they could lose their voting rights and face up to six years in prison. Although some states are moving toward restoring voting rights for felons, it remains illegal for felons to vote in Tennessee. So the picture that time is painting is that if you set up camp around a state building, then you're going to go to prison, you're going to be considered a felon, and your voting rights will be indefinitely revoked. And that is just not true. I mean, listen, I'm not a lawyer. Which, <laughs> if it was true, I'd be okay with that. I'd be okay with people getting sent to prison for rioting. And uh, these rioters, they'll be in prison for 45 days. If it goes through the election or if they're convicted before the election and they can't vote, I'm okay with that. Yeah, and, and listen, that is not true. That is not the law in Tennessee. You will not indefinitely lose your voting rights if you get a Class E felony for camping. These are the people uh, who, will, who will lose their voting rights. Uh, these, are, these are considered in Tennessee infamous crimes. If you abuse a female child, if you take part in arson and felonious burning, bigamy, bribery, burglary, felonious breaking into houses, larceny. Uh, so these are some examples of infamous crimes. Yes. That if you commit an infamous crime, you cannot vote. Exactly. Okay. Unless, so even in these cases, so notice camping is not on this list. <laughs> That's right. But even in these cases, it says, even if you were convicted of a crime listed above, you still have the right to vote if you can show that at the time of your conviction, the judge did not render you infamous, if your conviction was reversed on appeal or expunged, if you received a full pardon, or if you have your voting rights restored. So they straight up, they straight up lied in time in that Time Magazine article, they said, you cannot have your voting rights restored in Tennessee. 
I just read from it's a lie. I just read from a, from a state website that you can have your voting rights restored. That's right. And, and, and people believe Times and these other liberal media is like their gospel truth, uh, and they don't understand that there could ever be another side to any of the stories. I'm going to wrap up this section. Andrew, just tell me, why are we talking about these things? Why are we talking about the things that we are, we've, we've talked about on this program and the programs that we talk about? Why do, why do we do the things we do? Well, we're an end times ministry. That's right. We believe that we are in the last days, and we believe in Scripture that the Antichrist, when he comes, he doesn't establish a one-world government. He inherits a one-world government. That's right. So it's already set up. So if we're living in, in the end times, we should start to see that one-world government coming together. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing trained Marxists and, and anarchists trying to burn down and topple America because, right. like we've said time and time again, America is the only thing that stands in the way of a one-world government. That's right. That's exactly right. And it starts with brainwashing in public schools. I think now it's fitting to talk about Marxism and, and, and just the evil that's happening. I think, I think right now it'd be a fitting time to, to quote Adolf Hitler. Because he'd be in that camp. Yeah. Hitler said he alone who owns the youth gains the future. The brainwashing starts in public schools. You see, a Tennessee school district right now is under fire for asking parents to sign a form agreeing not to eavesdrop on their kids' virtual classes. Can you believe that? Over concerns that they could overhear confidential information. Now, after some parents blew a gasket, understandably, after hearing such an overreach of power, the school is now allowing parents to tune in with permission from the teacher but they can't record the classes. Lori Cardoza Moore, founder of Proclaiming Justice to the Nations, had a few choice words about the situation on Fox and Friends. Take a listen. Why would they not want parents to see what teachers are teaching their kids? Well, obviously, because they are teaching our children propaganda that we, they should not be teaching. They're not, they are trying to socialize our children we have had a major problem, <clears throat> excuse me, we've had a major problem in education, not just here in Tennessee, but across the country, where they are indoctrinating our children with propaganda. And not only that, they're telling parents in this agreement that they had to sign that if they violate, or they know, if they know that somebody else is violating and tuning in, they're to tell okay. on that parent. And if they violate this after, after they sign the agreement, if they violate it, then they can remove the child from the virtual learning classroom. What does that mean? Does that mean somebody from the school district is gonna knock on my door and pull my kid out of my, out of my home, his virtual classroom? Or is it going to be my tax dollars that fund my, my child's public education? My child won't get to participate in education because of it. What are they trying to hide? What is the problem? Yeah. Why won't why won't they let us sit in? Yeah, Lori, it's absurd that they're asking this. Um, the statement about uh, confidential information is also absurd, having taught in these classrooms for many years. But we do have a statement from the Rutherford County Schools. I want to read it and get your reaction to that in particular. It reads, we are aware of the concern that has been raised about this distance learning letter that was sent to parents. We have issued new guidance to principals that parents can assist their children during virtual group lessons with permission of the instructor, but should refrain from sharing or recording any information about other students in the classroom. So it sounds to me like now you can't record the session when in fact students may need that reinforcement later. They may not have been clear on something that happened in class and need it to be replayed. So are, are we disadvantaging kids now with this ridiculous policy, Lori? It's ridiculous. It's so hypocritical because they've been data mining our children for That's years. True. Compliments of Common Core. What are they keeping on our children? And you're right. What if our child wants to go back and re-listen to that segment of the class? What is it that the, the other kids are sharing that has to be confidential? You know, it used to be back in the day when parents could actually sit in on a class and they could monitor. But things have changed because we're not using education to teach our children how to read, how to write, how to do math. No, now we're social justice um, teaching our children. We're indoctrinating our children with propaganda? No, 
No, now you're just, now you're just paranoid. That is what we have been told. You know, I'm just going to read a, 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 another uh, quick article. And this is very important because this is the brainwashing that's taking place in our schools. This is where it starts. Whenever you see rioters and protesters out in the street, like where did the common sense go? Mm -hmm. It's because the common sense is never taught. Mm -hmm. Teacher complains that virtual classrooms will allow parents to witness woke brainwashing. So this is, the article says this is kind of a COVID uh, silver lining. <laughs> A leftist teacher has complained that virtual classrooms as a result of coronavirus will allow parents to witness the woke indoctrination their child is receiving and that this is a bad thing. If there is one silver lining to coronavirus, it's that many more parents are now becoming familiar with what their child is actually being taught. That worries Matthew R.K., educator and author of Not Light But Fire, how to lead meaningful race conversations in the classroom. Let's take a look at his tweets. This is unreal. So this fall, virtual class discussions will have many potential spectators, parents, siblings, etc., in the same room. And he's mad about this. We'll never be quite sure who is overhearing the discourse. Who cares? Yeah. It's their kids. What does this do for our equity inclusion work? Ask K. Oh, so the parents can't know. Here's another tweet. How much have students depended on the somewhat secure barriers of our physical classrooms to encourage vulnerability? How many of us have installed some version of what happens here stays here That's to crazy. help this? Our children? Oh, no, no. It's not Vegas. <laughs> no, it's, it, it, thank you, thank you. While conversations about race are in my wheelhouse and remain a concern in this no walls environment, I am most intrigued by the damage that helicopter snowplow parents can do in honest conversations about gender sexuality, he concludes. The damage actually, let's go back to the article. The damage actually being done is is kids being exposed to the kind of extremist, anti-American, white-hating, Black Lives Matter racism exposed by K and those who think like K. Listen, if you're thinking about sending your kid to school in 2020, in the age of 2020, you need to seriously consider private school or homeschool. And if you cannot do either of those two, you need to have several sit down conversations with your children's and have them relay back the information. Yeah. Have like, say, listen, if you, if you ever hear any of these keywords, these trigger words, you need to come back and tell me what is being said. I'm just going to end it with the, the one more, um, one more tweet. People think we're paranoid. This is author Julie Gunlock um, would say, no, we're not paranoid. Look at her tweet. So my son is online, is on an online orientation for his middle school, which is a public school. And this is the background for one of the speakers. It's like they're trying to push a political agenda on very young kids. Look at that picture for middle school. Now, what was the orientation about? Well, she addressed it. It wasn't about current events, what's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. Just an orientation for new students, lockers, schedules, dismissal, instructions. People wake up. Join the fight. Myself, Andrew Bellers, and the team here, we're standing on the rooftops trying to wake people up. The country, the country's, it's, it's, we're on the verge of losing everything. People need to understand that. And the Bible talks about these things. Like we said, it, it, it should never be, we know that the, the Antichrist will inherit a one world government, but that doesn't mean we ever stop fighting for true justice, according to the word of God, that we somehow just lay over and let it happen. God dwells in the light. God hates wickedness. Yeah. We are image bearers of Christ. May we emulate him in all areas, when it comes to speaking truth, no matter the cost and no matter the consequences. Well, that's going to do it for today's program. We'll see you next week.